Well, let's lift our hands to the Most High God and bless His holy name. Let's give God glory. Lift your hands to Him, worship Him, let Him hear your voice. Bless the King of Kings, bless the Lord of Lords. There's no one like Him. Worship Him, let Him hear your voice. Thank Him for preserving you. Give Him glory, give Him honor. Praise the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. There is none holy as the Lord. As the Lord. There is none beside thee, beside thee, neither is there any Lord like our God. There Eternal Rock of Ages, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Alpha and the Omega, the one who has no beginning, who has no ending, the unchangeable changer, our hope of glory, our savior, our healer, our deliverer, our provider, our promoter. Glory be to your holy name. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. My Father, my God, even as your children are marking 25th anniversary of their ministry, I pray, Lord God Almighty, that everyone here will go home with an anniversary present. And I pray, Lord God Almighty, that in the next 25 years, we bring in miracles, signs, wonders, like they have never dreamt possible. And let the miracles begin right now. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Our 
about waving at one or two people and say, good morning, God bless you. And uh, just before you take your seat, please, uh, you're going to help me do a very important job. May I invite uh, my son, his family, to please come forward. Um, we don't have opportunities like this all the time. Good. And you are going to help me pray for them. Just stretch your hands towards them. Wish them whatever you wish yourself. If you want to be healthy and strong, then pray for health and strength for them. If you want to prosper, wish them even greater prosperity. If you want to move from glory to glory, pray that they will move from glory to glory. Whatever you wish yourself, that's what I want you to wish them now. Please pray for them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, we thank you on behalf of this family. We thank you for the salvation of their souls. We thank you for keeping them in your love. We thank you for calling them into the work of the ministry. We thank you for the mighty things you have already done. And we thank you for the mightier things that you will yet do. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. <laughs> Father, please lay your mighty hands on your children and anoint them afresh. Lay your hand on these children too and just do greater things through them than they can even dream possible. Please, Lord God Almighty, in every area of their lives, show yourself to be more than sufficient. <laughs> and Daddy, any time we hear concerning this family, let it be good news. <laughs> in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Go ahead, praise the Almighty God. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. Mm. And then you may please be seated. God bless you all. Uh, I said once in a particular gathering, when I looked to my right and I saw the crowd, I looked to my left, I saw the crowd, and uh, I said, even if a preacher doesn't want to preach, if he says praise the Lord and he hears the hallelujah of these people, anointing will come. So let somebody shout hallelujah. And as I said, as I said during the dedication of this place, I rejoice from the bottom of my heart because this is an answer to my prayers. I rejoice. Because like my wife said to you, my prayer every day is that my children will be greater than I. Because greatness is meaningless unless it is generational. Abraham is respected today all over the world in many, many religions because Abraham was great. Isaac was very great. And Jacob was exceedingly great. I thank God 
that even in my lifetime, I could see this happening. So re rejoice with me. Give the almighty God a great fresh shout of praise. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Don't worry, the, the sermon of a mathematician will not be long. <laughs> so my, my service won't be long. But I, I, I mustn't forget to say to my governor, my son, that we are proud of you. We are very proud of you. And I want you to know we are constantly praying for you. And it doesn't matter what the enemy may try you will keep on succeeding. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Well, 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Because the theme of your anniversary is uh, exceeding abundant grace. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1, from verse 12 to 15. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. When they told me the theme for your anniversary, Exceeding abundant grace. <laughs> I said, God have mercy. This is uh, only great people <laughs> like Paul would think like of a team like that. I am not going to try to explain the theology of such a theme. Fortunately, Bigger men are coming later. The bishops will be here, the archbishops, the apostles. So, me, I'm a pastor. <laughs> and so, I will only speak in the language of a pastor, in the language that common people can understand. When the theologians come, they will give you the big ones. What is grace? Now, if the big boys come, they, are, they will tell you what grace is from Greek and Hebrew, etc., etc. But in the language of a mathematician, grace simply means Chosen for help. You don't deserve the help. The help comes. And in the name that's above every other name, from now on, wherever you go, when God wants to help just one fellow, it will be you. In Genesis chapter 6, from verse 6 to 8, Genesis 6, verse 6 to 8, God decided he wanted to wipe out the whole world. But he chose to help Noah. The Bible said God, Noah found grace with God. In John chapter 5, from verse 2 to 14, John 5, 2 to 14, the Bible tells us that there was a pool at Bethesda and there was a multitude there. Sick people, <clears throat> people who were hopeless, there were many. 
And an angel will come once in a year to stir the pool. And the first fellow to get in there is going to be made whole. Jesus came there. Of all the people there, he chose only one. The one who had been there for 38 years. He went to him, he healed him, and left the place. Only one fellow chosen for help. That fellow found grace. You will find grace. Then, abundant grace. That one is not chosen for help ordinarily. That one is chosen for promotion. When you find abundant grace, it means of the people around, God decides to choose you for promotion. Many a times, it is promotion you do not deserve. I mean, if you read Genesis chapter 48, you read your stories, very beautiful. But Joseph brought his sons, Ephraim, Manasseh, brought them to the father for blessing. Manasseh is the older, Ephraim is the younger. And Papa's eyes were a bit dim at that time. And so Joseph placed Manasseh where the right hand of the father will land and put Ephraim where the left hand will land for blessing. Because for one reason or the other, which the elders will teach you, there is more anointing in the right hand than on the left. I can't tell you why. But anytime you see you have an opportunity, maybe two of you have opportunity to be prayed for, put your head where the right hand will land. <laughs> Just collect it first and then we'll find out the theological reason later. And all of a sudden, Israel crossed his hand. The right hand, he laid it on the head of the younger. The left hand on the head of the elder. And Joseph said, Papa, no, 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 no. The, this fellow is the elder. Don't make a mistake. I'm not making a mistake. That kind of blessing that you don't deserve, the Almighty God will give you today. I give you that's one example in the Old Testament, give you one in the New Testament. In Matthew chapter 17, from verse 1 to 9, Matthew 17, 1 to 9. It is a story of what happened on the Mount of Transfiguration. The Lord brought the 12 disciples to the bottom of the mountain. And then he said to three, Peter, James, and John, you come along with me. The rest of you stay here. And he took the three to the top of the mountain and was transfigured before them. They saw what nobody else had seen before. And when they finished, he said, don't tell the others. The first time I was in Israel, when we got to the Mount of Transfiguration, it occurred to me, and I told those who went with me, I said, what is the fault of the nine who were left behind? that God chose three and just took them up, showed them what he wanted to show them, and told them, don't tell anyone. The nine left behind haven't done anything wrong. 
but abundant grace gave them promotion. As the Lord lives, the one I serve, unusual promotion. that you don't even discern will be your portion from now on. But then now let's come to the real big one. Exceeding abundant grace. This is not just ordinary grace. This is not just abundant grace, but grace that exceeded the abundant one. <laughs> ah, this is what happens when someone is already enjoying abundant grace and then he blew it. Mess up did something you, you can't even imagine. And then God still looks down and says, all right, you've messed up, but I will forgive you. I will restore you. I will reinstate you. You see, the Bible says when sins abound, grace much more abound. I'll give you some simple examples. David, you know David. <laughs> that boy enjoyed grace. He enjoyed abundant grace. May the day God sent someone to go and appoint a king in his father's house. The father didn't even present him forward. The father never thought that he could qualify to be a king. And God, the man of God said, we won't sit down until you bring him. The grace. They brought him. They anointed him in the presence of his brother. And God just kept on promoting him, promoting him until he became very great. So great that he didn't even have to fight anymore. He had enough people to do his fighting for him. But then came Second Samuel chapter 11, from verse 1 to 11 to the end, for Second Samuel chapter 11, read the whole story. While everybody was fighting where a king should be at war, David was at home enjoying himself. Wealth has come, prosperity has come, power has come. And then he woke up in the evening, walked on, the, on the, the terrace of his house, saw a woman bathing. Up to today, I don't know why that woman was bathing where David could see her. But he saw her. And one problem led to another. You know the story. The woman became pregnant. David tried to cover it up by bringing the husband who was a soldier, faithful soldier, fighting for him, brought him home, uh, tried to make him drunk, but the man remained faithful and wouldn't go home. And so he decided to kill him for being loyal. He killed him. And then, to pretend that he was a very good king, he brought the woman in. He said, you see, this is how I look after the widows of my faithful soldiers. <sighs> and then we come to Second Samuel chapter 12. I mean, here's a man who blew it big time. When God sent a prophet to him and said, something like this happened in your kingdom, he said, whoever did it is dead. And God said, write judgment. And you are the one. But uh, it's amazing. 
As soon as David said, ah, I have sinned, God said, okay, you are forgiven. Uh-uh. He, he hasn't finished confessing. God said, I have already forgiven you. But, but it's, that is not even the big one there. Later on, a child born as a union of David and that terrible woman who was an adulteress of the highest degree that led to the death of her husband. A child was born, and the Bible said God loved that son. Uh -uh. The first time I read that one, after I became born again, I asked God a question. I had many questions when I was a younger Christian. I said, Daddy, I'm not querying you. I, I just can't understand. An adulterer, a murderer, went into an adulteress of the worst type who killed her husband, at least caused the death of her husband, and they brought forth a child and you love that child. And then God asked me a question. He says, son, your mother, is she the first wife of your father? I said, no more questions. <laughs> no more questions. There's somebody here today. It doesn't matter how badly you have messed up. You are going to enjoy exceeding abundant grace. Take another example from the New Testament. Take Peter. You know the story of Peter. <laughs> the day Jesus met Peter, there were two boats. Jesus chose the one that belonged to Peter. Gave him a breakthrough so mighty that he needed the help of the other boat to carry his wealth. And I've always said it, I'm saying it again here too, because you are all my children. A day will come, you will need somebody to help you carry your money to the bank. <laughs> and then Peter began to walk with God, and God did a lot of marvelous things for him. For example, it was one of the three that went to the Mount of Transfiguration. Do you know of all the disciples, only Peter walked on water? I know when they are telling you the story, they will only tell you the story that he took his eyes off Jesus and began to sink. Before he started sinking, he walked on water. Why don't you walk a bit and begin to sink, and then we'll, <laughs> we, will, we will see who you are. And then he said to the Lord Jesus Christ, I will never deny you. Oh, he denied him three times in one night. He blew it full time. But then when you get to John chapter 21 from verse 7 to 12, John 21 from verse 7 to 12, the Bible said Jesus everywhere. So we take it from verse, uh, maybe it's take it from verse 7 to 17 to, to, to make it comprehensive. Jesus still went after him, restored him, and told him, I know you have failed badly, but will you still be my senior pastor? This same Peter ended up with a shadow healing the sick. That is what I call exceeding abundant grace. And that kind of grace that nobody can really explain. And I, I told some of my children long ago, 
There are three ways of doing things. The right way, the wrong way, and God's way. When God wants to do something, nobody checks. It is not a question of right or wrong. It's just God. Why? Because God is sovereign. Psalm 115 verse 3. Psalm 115 verse 3, our God is in the heavens. He does as he pleases. May it please the almighty God to give you exceeding abundant grace. Now, there's something quite interesting about grace. Whether grace, abundant grace, or exceeding abundant grace, God does it as he pleases. You don't want it. It's just like salvation. By grace we are saved, not of works. But you know what? There are certain things you must do if you are going to enjoy this thing called exceeding abundant grace. Ah, you say, hey, Father, I mean, that is, hold it there. I thought you said grace is a merited favor. Mm, that's true. I mean, after all, God said in Romans chapter 9 from verse 15 to 16, Romans 9, 15 to 16, he said, I will be merciful unto whom I be merciful, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. And he said, therefore, it's not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. The whole thing is mercy. But as a small boy, who had been working with God since uh, 1973, I discovered something. Whenever God says, this is the way it is, this is what I'm going to do. If you are close enough to hear him whisper, he will say, however, if you do this, you will commit me. For example, he said, I will show mercy unto whom I will show mercy. Uh, that's my prerogative. But then he whispers and says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 7, Matthew 5 verse 7, blessed are the merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. I say, I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. Eh, but if you will go quietly and show mercy yourself, whether I like it or not, I will show mercy unto you. What can I do so that if God wants to show exceeding abundant mercy to only one fellow. I will be the one. Whenever I have a meeting at Holy Ghost service, I'm particularly outside the country, where I've never been before, I always ask the people to pray a prayer. God, if you are going to bless only one person here tonight, let me be the one. What must I do? I think you should take a look at David and learn from him. When he blew it and they told him he blew it, his repentance was genuine. When you get home, read Psalm 51. He prayed a prayer of repentance and he never offended God again and me never again 
Consider Peter, who blew it full time, like I said. The Bible tells us that when he denied Jesus Christ the third time, and Jesus looked at him and their eyes met, the Bible said Peter went out and wept bitterly. His repentance was genuine. Around the time when I got born again, around the time when Paul got born again, when people come to the altar to receive Jesus Christ, they come crying. Genuine repentance. When Paul, the apostle, who wrote the text, when he met Jesus Christ on the way to Damascus, as soon as he realized that he was wrong, as he hit the ground, his next question is, what do you want me to do, Lord? And he never, never, never looked back. Never. You can read many of his epistles. You will hear him, for example, say in Galatians chapter 2, from verse 20 to 21, Galatians 2, 20 to 21, he said, oh, whether I live or I die, I just want to please Jesus. I know I've obtained grace, and I refuse to frustrate that grace. I'm sure you... There are a lot of teachings on grace now. Like I said, I'm a pastor. I'm not a theologian. That's why I've, I've dodged that one. You hear people tell you once you are born again. You can keep on living like a child of the devil. Grace will cover it all. I say I beg to differ. Because I know grace can be frustrated. You hear Paul say, For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. God is sovereign, but He knows all things. He knows the end from the beginning, He knows your heart. Just as he knows mine. I'm finished. I told you the sermon will be brief. I believe without any doubt that God has given you this team for your very special anniversary. Because God knows that there might be some of us who are just following the crowd to the church. And he wants you to change. He wants a commitment from you. A commitment that will say, if I live, I will live for Christ. If I die, I will die for Christ. A commitment that will say, bye-bye to sin. Thank God I am saved. I am not going back. I've already prayed for you. And thank God with all humility I can say this. He answers my prayers. You are not going to live here without an anniversary gift. <laughs> but my concern is not just today. My concern is your tomorrow, your future. Where do we go from here? 
So I'm going to make an altar call. Two in one. If you are in church today, and you know you are backsliding, you know those things, you say you will never do again, you are back to doing them. You need to come back to the foot of the cross. For the Almighty God to restore you, to cleanse you afresh, and then to reinstate you. Or you are in church. You are not even born again. And you are listening to me. This is your day. I know there are many of you outside. I saw a bit when I was coming. But for those of you who are here, I appeal to you in the name of the sovereign God. Come and surrender your life to Jesus Christ now. I'm going to count from 1 to 15 because I know some of you will have to travel some distance to get here. But if by the time I say 15, you are not already standing before me here, I will know either you are sure of your salvation, you are sure of your sanctification, your commitment to God. You are sure beyond all doubts that if the Lord returns today, you will make it to heaven. If not, come now before I say 15. One. It's God who is calling you. Calling you to salvation. Calling you to restoration. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Thank you. Those of you who are clapping, your hands will never wither. Keep clapping. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Keep clapping. Those who are outside, I just come in. Keep clapping for them. Eleven. Twelve. Oh, thank you, Father. Thirteen. Hurry up. I know you are coming from afar, but hurry up now. Fourteen.
Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Those of you on the way, just keep coming. But those of you already in front, cry to the Almighty God. And say, Lord, have mercy on me. Save my soul. Restore me to fellowship with you. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. No looking back at all. Please have mercy on me. And the rest of us, please let's stretch our hands towards our brothers and sisters in front and intercede for them. That the one who saved our souls will save their souls also. That God will give them genuine salvation. Salvation that cannot be queried. Pray for them for just two minutes. Pray for them. Oh, thank you, Father. Lord, have mercy. Those of you on the way, just make sure you get here before I finish praying, and that will still be all right. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Savior, I want to bless your holy name. I want to thank you for your word, and I want to thank you for these people who have responded to this altar call. Father, please remember your promise that whosoever will come unto you, you will know why cast out. They've come to you now. Father, receive them in Jesus' name. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away their sins. Give them genuine salvation. Let everything become new for them. Receive them into the family of God. And those who are backsliders who have decided to return, please receive them in Jesus' name. Restore them in Jesus' name. And Father, I commit all these your children to your hands. From now on, any time they call on you, answer them by fire. Thank you, my Father and my God. And now, my Father and my God, I'm committed everybody in church this morning to your hands. And everyone who will ever hear this message, please, Lord, anything they ask for now, before the sun sets, let it become a testimony. <laughs> I'm going to ask them to ask you Father, for an anniversary gift, a miracle so big that they will never forget today. Father, give unto them. Let this day be a day to be remembered. And I pray that in your kingdom, none of us will be missing. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, those of you who have come forward, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm rejoicing with you. And I'm promising you as a man of God, as God will help me from now on, I will be remembering you in my prayers. The counselors here, they will attend to you. But before you go, before the counselors take you away, I want you to be part of the prayer we're about to pray. And ask the Almighty God to grant your request. That whatever you ask Him today, He will give it to you before the sun sets. So I want you to be part of that prayer. And the rest of us, shall we stand on our feet and shout a big hallelujah to God? I want you to forget everybody else and focus on God for just five minutes and ask God for an anniversary gift, a miracle that only God can give. 
Just go ahead. Ask him now. Whatever you want from him, something very big, something very mighty, go ahead. Ask the Almighty God and say, just give me this as an anniversary gift and I will forever be grateful unto you. Go ahead. Talk to God. It's between you and God now. Call on him. Open your mouth and speak it to God. While doing that, if you have your expectation, lift it high up. Open your mouth and pray like you have never prayed before. I want some of our people at the back of the mic. When your expectations up, open your mouth and pray. No movement anywhere, just open your mouth and pray. Something is about to happen. Pray. Lift your expectation of pray. Ele é duro, vai atrás. Esse dá lá para. 
Jesus. Lift it higher. Please be upstanding everywhere you are. Everywhere in the overflow, ensure you are upstanding. A very heavy mantle just passed here. A generational grace just passed here. You are going to speak to God, oh Lord, that mantle that just passed, that grace that just passed here, I receive my portion now. Lift your voice and say, Father, Father that, grace that grace that just passed here, that, just passed here, that, mantle, that 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 mantle